today we are doing a radish kimchi and I think a lot of you guys have had this in uh, the Korean restaurants before as a side dish but why we are particularly interested in this is for the water liquid that is left behind because later on in the week I will be showing you how to do a cold Korean buckwheat noodle that has this really amazing icy tangy savory broth that will require us to make this recipe first. So the first thing that I do is I cut up two daikon radishes according to the size of my container. Now usually this recipe is done with Korean radishes but if you don't have it, daikon is a really good substitute. And I just take some sea salt and I liberally rub the outsides of the radish with it. No need to peel, no need to really do anything but just cut it to the size of your container. So usually the Koreans will have the tops of the radish as well, the green bits. I didn't have any but I did have some mustard leaves so what I did was I chopped it up and I tried to mimic the same thing. And the nice thing about this is after you finish pickling it you're gonna have some nice pickled leaves as well. So put a lid on this and then set it aside for two to three days. That will give the radish itself time to release some of that liquid and then start on the fermentation process. I'm going to put the recipe down below but I have some red chili peppers, some green chili peppers, some garlic, some ginger, some scallions and then finally um, a half of an Asian pear and just that little bit of sweetness is going to help flavor the radish as well as give some sugar for the whole fermentation process. That was just some water and you fill it up pretty much to the top and then I'm gonna top it off with some of those mustard greens again. Now if you have some kind of a weight, it's useful actually because it'll keep everything down and submerged in the liquid. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna close this up and you're going to be putting it in a dark kind of cool place for another three days and you'll start seeing some bubbles form because of that fermentation process. Feel free to open it and check as you go just to make sure that the smells are smelling, you know, just a little bit tangy and then afterwards stick it into your refrigerator where it will continue fermenting and I would leave it there for another week or two because the longer that you go, the more that the flavors develop.
I did a pickled cabbage leaf with minced meat noodles last week and you guys can treat those mustard leaves as such as well because it's tangy, it's a little bit salty. It goes really well with um, all different types of dishes. And of course, with the radishes, feel free to cut it up. You can mix it into salads if you want because it's going to provide that nice bite and crunch and sharpness. Anyways, I hope you all have enjoyed this Korean radish kimchi recipe. Make sure to stay tuned later on in the week for this cold buckwheat noodle. Oh my gosh, the broth is so, so good. As usual, if you want to see more recipes like this, remember to hit that like and subscribe button, and I will see you guys all again next time. Bye!